Leaving Cert Higher Level Maths 2023. This is the solution video to paper one, question four. So paper one, question four is our complex numbers question. So in this, we're told the complex number Z1 uh, equal to one plus I is a root of the complex equation Z squared plus three minus two I times Z plus P is equal to zero. Find the value of P where P is a complex number A plus B I with A and B elements of Z. So there are several ways you can do this. I think the easiest way and the quickest way is to sub in one plus I in for Z and Z here. So that would be one plus I squared plus three minus two I times one plus I plus P is equal to zero. So if we square this out, we'd get one plus two I plus i squared. Multiplying this out, we get three by one is three. We get three by i is plus three i. And we get minus two i by one is minus two i. And then we get minus two i by i is minus two i squared. And then plus p is equal to zero. Tidying it all up then, put the i's together, put the, the numbers together, you'll end up with five plus three i plus p is equal to zero, and we want p on its own, so p is equal to minus five minus three i. So this part A question, um, out of 30 marks, this part was worth five marks. Part B, we're asked to use the Moivre's theorem to find the values for omega, uh, for which omega squared is equal to minus one plus root three i. Give each value of omega in the form of a plus b i with a and b an element of or. Now you don't have a lot of room to do this question here. I'm gonna try and fit it all in, but if you struggled to fit it in here, there is the space at the end of the exam to do that. So uh, first thing we need to do is to write this in general polar form. So first thing we find, um, I'm go or first thing rather is I'm gonna draw a little sketch of it up here. So it's minus one, plus root three, so let's say it looks like this here. So this is our complex number. Um, we need our angle here, our argument theta, and we also need our modulus here as well. In order to find the argument, I need to first of all find that angle there, uh, alpha. So alpha is equal to the tan inverse of root three over one. That's from this triangle here, root three and one, sorry, root three is there, not there, root three and one. Um, and that's equal to pi over three radians. Uh, therefore, theta is equal to pi minus pi over three, which is two pi over three radians. So that's theta. And then to find our modulus or, or is equal to the square root of uh, minus one squared plus root three squared. So that's equal to two. So or is equal to two. So now I can write this in general polar form. Uh, so general polar form, I have omega squared is equal to uh, two times cos of two pi over three plus 2n pi, uh, brackets around that, plus i sine 2 pi over 3 plus 2n pi, 2n pi, uh, close the brackets, and that is all then to the power of 2. So if I, this is omega squared, which is what's given in the question. If I want to find the, each value for omega, I just want omega. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So if I, that would get rid of the square there and would actually give me one over two to the power of a half over here. So I can just do that in one line there to save a bit of time. Now I can apply the Moivre's theorem and it's the Moivre's theorem uh, to the power of a half. So the Moivre then is gonna be omega is equal to two to the power of a half times cos of a half 
times 2 pi over 3 plus 2n pi plus i sine of a half times 2 pi over 3 plus 2n pi. So then I can simplify this out a bit more and say that that's equal to 2 to the power of a half is root 2 times the cosine of multiplying 2 in here I end up with pi over 3 plus n pi as my argument uh, plus i sine of pi over 3 plus n pi. So that is now my complex number written um, in general polar form after applying the Moivre's theorem. And now it's a quadratic, it has a square in it. So I have two values of n to input n equal to 0 and n equal to 1. So we'll do n equal to 0 here. So that would be root 2 times cos of pi over 3 plus i sine pi over 3. And that would be equal to root 2 over 2 plus root 6 over 2i. That's the first one. And then for n equal to 1, I have root 2 times cosine of pi over 3. If n is 1, then that's just plus pi plus i sine of pi over 3 plus pi. So that works out to be minus root 2 over 2 minus root 6 over 2 i. And out of the 30 marks for that, uh, part b was actually worth 15 marks. So half of the marks going for part b, which was a, a tricky enough question. Um, and if you got it uh, fully right, very generous with the 15 marks. Over to part c then, part c. Um, we have the argon diagram uh, shows the complex number u is equal to a plus bi, where a and b are an element of or. Write the complex numbers i times u and i times u bar in their simplest forms in terms of a and b, where uh, i u bar is the complex conjugate of i u. So to get i u, I just multiply this by i, so that would be i times a plus b i so that will work out to be a i plus b i squared i squared is minus one so that's going to be minus b plus a times i and now the complex conjugate of that is just changing that sign there so that's minus b minus a times i part two you're asked to plot and label the complex numbers on the diagram above as accurately as possible. They don't have any grid, so it's it's just a fairly loose um, sketch of it, but just be as accurate as possible. So i times u, if you multiply by i, that's a rotation uh, anti-clockwise with the origin as the center. So if I wanted to do that, I'd go out this way, and that, that would be a 90 degree angle, and out the same distance, and I would get, say, i u here. I u, and then if I wanted to plot um, I u bar, the complex conjugate, that is a reflection of that through the real axis there like that. So here is I u bar. And that is actually the question for part three is to say what those transformations are. So um, state a transformation or a series of transformations that would send u to i u bar do not include uh, a translation in your answer so they have to be transformations so first thing is to do a 90 degree uh, anti-clockwise rotation so a rotation is a transformation but it is not a translation a rotation about the origin And then you could do axial symmetry, uh, axial symmetry 
in the x-axis or you could say in the real axis. So um, that is all you need for part C. Part C was worth 10 marks, which was uh, probably quite generous. It was the easiest part, I think, of this question in total. So if you have any questions about it, just ask in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.